Delta Force operators, strapped into MH-47G Chinooks, were skimming the Caribbean at a mere 100 feet above the waves when the world's most advanced electronic warfare suite turned a metropolitan hub into a ghost town. This was the opening seconds of Operation Absolute Resolve, a high-stakes precision recovery that utilized over 150 U.S. military aircraft to achieve the impossible. While the media focuses on the politics, we are going inside the engineering marvel that allowed the United States military to perform a seamless extraction of a high-value objective. This wasn't just a mission, it was a billion-dollar masterclass in American military engineering, combining stealth technology, cyber warfare, and Tier 1 tactical precision. That is the engineering reality of Operation Absolute Resolve. The foundation of this mission began with a digital architecture so complex it would make a Silicon Valley engineer's head spin. Before a single F-35 Lightning II left the tarmac, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency and the NSA created what is known as a digital twin of the target zone. Using sub-centimeter satellite imagery and advanced LIDAR, they mapped the primary residence down to the thickness of the reinforced concrete walls. But the U.S. military takes preparation further than any other force on Earth. In a classified training range, engineers built a full-scale, one-to-one -one replica of that complex. Our elite Delta Force operators spent months physically clearing those rooms, learning every door swing and every blind spot by heart. They were looking for a specific weather and atmospheric window, a moment where the radar-absorbent coatings on our stealth aircraft would be at their peak efficiency, ensuring that the nearly full moon on January 3rd, 2026 wouldn't matter. At exactly 10.46 p.m. Eastern Time on January 2nd, the GO order triggered a global launch sequence that remains a logistical miracle. Over 150 aircraft took off from 20 different land bases and warships across the Western Hemisphere. Think about the synchronization required to have dozens of different airframes, each with different cruise speeds and fuel requirements, all arriving over a single point in space at the exact same microsecond. Leading this charge was the Stealth Umbrella, consisting of F-22 Raptors and F-35 Lightning IIs. The F-35 is often called a fighter, but in this mission, it acted as a flying supercomputer. Its sensor fusion technology allowed it to soak up every electronic signal in the region, stitch it into a 3D map, and beam that data directly to the ground teams. It turned the fog of engagement into a high-definition video feed. While the stealth fighters held the high ground, the B-1B Lancer, or the Bone, provided the heavy insurance. This supersonic bomber is an engineering beast, with variable sweep wings that allow it to fly fast and low, or loiter for hours, with a massive internal payload. Its job was to provide overwhelming deterrence if the mission turned into a conventional engagement. But the real magic was happening in the electromagnetic spectrum. The EA-18G Growler and the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye were the mission's electronic backbone. The Growler doesn't just jam radar, it uses digital radio frequency memory to spoof enemy sensors. It essentially captures the adversary's radar waves and sends back a modified version, making our entire fleet appear as though it were miles away from its actual location. It is a digital blindfold that left the local air defense systems paralyzed and useless. By 2 a.m. on January 3rd, the infiltration reached its most dangerous phase. The 161st Special Operations Aviation Regiment, the legendary Night Stalkers, utilized a technique called radar clutter engineering. By flying their MH-47G Chinooks and MH-60M Blackhawks at just 100 feet above the ocean waves, they hid their radar signature in the natural noise of the sea state. This low-level flight is an incredible feat of pilot skill and mechanical engineering, as the helicopters must fight the salt spray and turbulent air while navigating in total darkness. Simultaneously, U.S. Cyber Command executed a digital engagement that changed the laws of modern operations. They exploited vulnerabilities in the regional power grid, plunging the capital into a total blackout. This wasn't a crude disruption of a power plant. It was a surgical digital shutdown that masked the sound of the approaching low-flying helicopters. The tip of the spear hit the ground at 2.01 a.m. local time. Delta Force operators fast-roped from the Chinooks onto the roof of a facility protected by hardened steel doors and ballistic windows. But American engineering had a solution for the site's fortifications. Instead of traditional breaching charges, which could have impacted the target, the operators used specialized mechanical tools. 
They utilized high-temperature thermal lances and hydraulic spreaders that can snap through structural steel with the ease of a hot knife through butter. As the entry unfolded, the ground teams moved with the speed and precision of a machine. They weren't just guessing which room to enter. They used wall-penetrating radar and thermal sensors that showed the heat signatures of everyone inside the residence through six inches of concrete. The recovery itself was a tactical, rapid entry. The objective attempted to reach a steel-fortified safe room, a panic room designed to survive a breach. But the Delta operators were faster. They intercepted the primary individual in the hallway before the heavy door could be secured. This entire sequence was executed with such discipline that the primary objective was secured without casualty. Even when one of the helicopters took incoming fire from a nearby defense outpost, the engineering of the MH-47G Chinook saved the crew. These machines are built with triple redundant flight systems and armored engine housings, allowing them to take hits that would neutralize any other aircraft and still stay in the operation. The exfiltration was a race against the sunrise. As the Night Stalkers lifted off with the individuals, they were protected by an unblinking eye in the sky, the RQ-170 Sentinel. This stealth drone, often called the Wraith, provided high-resolution thermal video directly to the USS Iwo Jima, ensuring no countermoves could hinder the extraction route. The USS Iwo Jima, an amphibious assault ship, served as the primary command and control hub. This ship is a marvel of maritime engineering, a floating city that combines a massive flight deck with a high-tech hospital and secure facilities. It allowed our forces to process the objectives in a controlled environment while still being mobile enough to evade any response. By 3.30 a.m., the mission was confirmed to be over international waters. The final leg of the journey concluded at 5 p.m. ST, when the transport aircraft touched down at Stewart Air National Guard Base in New York. From the first engine start to the final landing, Operation Absolute Resolve was a flawless demonstration of the three pillars of American power. Our elite personnel, our unmatched engineering, and our integrated technology. It proved that in the 21st century, the most effective weapon isn't just the one that fires, it's the one that sees, thinks, and acts before the opposition even knows a mission has begun. This operation was a victory for the aircraft designers at Lockheed Martin and Boeing, the cyber operators at Fort Meade, and the operators of Delta Force, who live by the creed of surprising, speed, and success. It was an engineering masterclass that showed the world that geography and steel doors are no longer a defense against the reach of the United States military. When we look at the F-35's sensor fusion, or the Chinook's terrain-following radar, we aren't just looking at machines. We are looking at the culmination of decades of American investment in being the best. If you're proud of the technology and the people who keep our nation at the cutting edge, make sure you hit that like button and share this with someone who appreciates the power of American ingenuity. Operation Absolute Resolve will be studied in military academies for the next 50 years, as the perfect example of how to use technology to achieve a surgical result. What part of this 30-minute operation was the most impressive to you? Was it the digital blackout that paralyzed a city, or the 100-foot flight over the Caribbean? Let us know in the comments below. We're going to keep bringing you the deep dives into the military mega-projects and the high-tech assets that define our world. I'm your host, and this was the Inside Engineering of Operation Absolute Resolve.